here. Um, Kelsey, what are you, where, where are you? There we go. I'm at Lincoln Rural University, so. What are your plans? What, you, what is your role there? And what are your plans this summer? Um, well, I do orientation and transition programs. So my big summer plans is to plan all of the orientation. So. <laughs> ah, you're, you're about to get really busy. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Um, Mary Fields, are you there? I can't see you, but. Uh... You hear me? I do hear you, Mary. Where are you? Uh, I am uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm with uh, Warren Wilson College. Excellent. I, I am um, uh, probably a new name. I am uh, in uh, for Wendy Seligman. I don't know if she's been in these before. She probably has. I yep. wasn't sure if she'd be able to make this, so I wanted to hop on and, and take notes. Well, thanks for filling in for her. She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Old friend she of is. ours. Yeah, I love her. Fantastic. Renee? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm uh, the chair for the Department of Management and Leadership at Brunel University, and we're in North Georgia. Um, I'm a Sullivan faculty fellow, and this summer I'm teaching a study abroad class that the Sullivan Foundation is um, a sponsor of, and we're going to be in Costa Rica for 15 nights, and we have six Sullivan schools participating. Fantastic. And Renee, we just um, honored Renee being the uh, um, Engaged Faculty uh, Award at our um, Sullivan Showcase last month for everything that she's done with the organization. So thank you for your continued effort, Matt. Thank you. Rebecca? I'm Rebecca Parrish. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Advancement Services at Converse University in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, and congrats, Renee. I just saw some of the pictures um, and I saw your blue hair. I said, oh, it's her. <laughs> Um, so it's good to see you. Congratulations. That's a huge honor. Um, yes. My summer plans entail um, getting our new two Sullivan Fellows in place. Um, we have an internal deadline for them to actually uh, finish their applications by May 1st. And um, so we can sort of name those folks. We've got um, commencement coming up uh, where we give our Mary Mildred Sullivan Award and Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award um, for community and students. And um, this summer I'm going to be uh, doing some uh, college searching with my son. Fantastic, that's awesome. Cade, I see you there. Hey Jody, hey everybody. Uh, I work at the University of Mississippi just right down the street from Jody's office and um, so serve as assistant vice chancellor for community engagement here. I see Whitney is on on the call as well. So I'll let her update everybody on on the uh, our Sullivan fellows and how that's evolving. We just uh, two weeks ago we had our week of engagement, and so the celebration of service, including the the um, Sullivan Awards, is is a big part of of uh, <clears throat> that recognition of the good work of students and and employees. As when, um, so we're, we're thankful for that. This summer, I'm looking forward to, I'm working on this really big data project that's kind of got my, my curiosity up related to student success, how students find their way into the university, and then how we can better understand their success or lack of success within the university. Um, on a personal note, um, I'll be doing a little bit of travel. I'll go to New England to uh, Massachusetts for a week in June. And then my daughter, adult daughter, lives in Fayetteville, Arkansas, will work remotely during July um, while um, I take care of my ex-wife's dog uh, while she's in Michigan. So uh, I look forward to having my, my adult uh, daughter um, with me this summer as well. That's awesome, Kate. That's great. Um, thank you. All right, uh, Jennifer? Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah. I'm new to the call. Um, I am at Duke University, and I help to coordinate and administer the Sullivan Awards for uh, the university. My fun summer plans are a week in Turks and Caicos with my three teenage daughters and husband. He's going to. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Linda, where are you? My name is Linda McKinnish Bridges, and I'm with Salem Academy and College. 
as Director of Corporate and Foundation Relations. And of course, my job this summer is to continue raising money for Salem. So uh, we're just uh, you know moving forward in a, a full steam with a full year uh, developing an even stronger portfolio of foundations and corporations. But for my summer personal, I wanna be wherever, oh, she has disappeared from my screen. Um, this is uh, Renee from Brunel. Her back, yeah, Renee, I wanna go wherever Renee is right now this moment, this summer. I wanna be with Renee wherever that is, your background. Linda, that is my wishful thinking place. I <laughs> know it's this lovely. time of the year. We all <laughs> wish we were someplace else. I want That's to be right. transported to that beach. Well, it's very relaxing to see it. Thank you for using that as your backdrop. And I'll be in Winston Salem this summer, so I might pop in. Well, please do. Please come by to see me. We'd love to have you here. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Linda. Uh, let's see here. I think uh, we have a Jennifer. Another Jennifer here. I don't know if there's issues. Yep. Where are you? Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Barrero, and I am the Dean of Students at Salem College. Uh, this is my first time on the call. I was actually just appointed today, so <laughs> I've only been at Salem for a little bit. Very interested in learning more about this group and about the Sullivan Foundation. And as far as this summer, I'll be going to California for family reunion and seeing folks I haven't seen in about 20 years. It's awesome. Safe travels with that. Lots of good plans here. Now, Catherine Wolf. I think Catherine's popped in at the end. Are you there? Maybe not. That's okay. All right. We might get a chance. Well, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, we will, uh, of course, start back. Uh, this will be our last uh, call for this semester. We'll start back in August, and you'll be getting mailings for that. So make sure you mark that, and I'll give you the link for it. But this time, I'll, I'll, we're always mindful of time. And But I want to introduce uh, Christopher uh, Gergen. And he uh, has been working with the Sullivan Foundation for over a decade now in different capacities. And um, some people have known him. Some people, he's really come back into uh, working more on programmings in the last uh, 12 months. And, and he's got a vision for our organization regarding port programming. And he's got a very cool and unique background. So I just want to open up the floor to him to, to, to give us a little talk today. Cool. All right. Thank you, Jody. All right. Well, I'll start with the prompt, which I always appreciate. So I'm Christopher Gergen and Jennifer, I'm based in Durham. Uh, so I initially got connected to the Sullivan Foundation by teaching social innovation and entrepreneurship at Duke, uh, which is what brought us back to Durham with our two young kids at the time. And so now, Rebecca, my summer plans include taking our 16-year-old son on some college visits, so I can uh, appreciate that that journey. And our 19-year-old daughter is now a freshman at App State in the mountains of North Carolina. So she's uh, off to a Knowles program in Alaska for part of the summer, but we'll be spending some fun adventure times together uh, as well, which will be great. Um, so as Jody mentioned, I've been a, an advisor for the Sullivan Foundation for over a decade now. Um, and really the, the relationship started because uh, as you probably know, we'll talk about it further, but a number of you have mentioned the Sullivan Awards, which have been going on now for a hundred years. So we're about to celebrate our centennial uh, in Nashville, Tennessee in September of, oh, sorry, in um, spring of 2025. Uh, but but Steve, through his leadership, basically said, hey, we, we definitely want to continue to honor uh, servant leaders and people who have demonstrated exceptional service through the award program, but is there a way to be able to start a little bit earlier and think about ways to be able to equip uh, young people with the mindset and skill set to be change making leaders to be thinking about how they can take on some of the complex challenges facing our world and be able to drive innovative solutions to be able to address them. And so, as I mentioned earlier, I uh, had been invited to run something called the Entrepreneurial Leadership Institute at Duke. And uh, Steve came and saw me and we started putting our heads together about what something like this might look like and recognize the fact that this, I think, could be a very rich area for for uh, exploration and program development. So that's what we've been doing for the last several years. And I know, 
you know, several of you like Renee are deeply involved in what's happening with Sullivan and some of you are new to, uh, to this experience uh, uh, as well. So Jennifer, for example, congratulations on your new role. It sounds awesome. Uh, it's great to be able to have more schools joining into this conversation as well. So I thought it'd be helpful to basically run us through a handful of slides, which sort of help frame up what the relationship uh, with these students look like and how we're really thinking about our programming. Um, and then, you know, what we want to try to do is make this as conversational as possible. So as you all uh, have questions, you know, feel free to to jump in and uh, and I'll I've got my I've got two screens open, but hopefully you can. Can you all see that screen? OK, perfect. All right. Sounds good. So I thought it'd be helpful, uh, like we did actually when we were with Renee and others. Uh, Jody was part of this as well when we had a big showcase celebration where Renee was honored and we were able to honor a number of other folks, which just came out in the um, in the newsletter as well. But just to really return back to like what is the mission of the Sullivan Foundation and and I'm going to unpack this for a minute because I think it helps to really ground what we're talking about in this work. So let's first of all think about the verbs here to equip honor and support service oriented college students staff and faculty so each of those verbs are important to equip to honor and support service oriented students and so what you're going to hear in terms of some of our programming is it's anchored in that concept is that not only do we honor these students through the awards but we also want to make sure that they are equipped again, with the mindset and skill sets that we're talking about. And then as they launch into the world, how do we continue to support them uh, as they as they continue to embark beyond their four years um, at your respective institutions and really think about what the long term relationship and sustained partnership might look like for them. And then uh, importantly, and you all represent this is thinking about how do we do that in the context of communities in the American South, you represent communities all across the American South. And it's really our thought to be able to figure out ways that we can help these students make lasting positive change in the communities in your existing sort of local communities, whether it be Winston Salem or whether it be uh, in South Carolina, whether it be in Oxford, Mississippi, uh, but thinking about ways that they can also go on to create really meaningful change uh, in whatever community that they're living in. So that's the that's the mission statement. Does anybody have any sort of questions or thoughts about that? All right, cool. So so then let me then put this into a context of like, how do we actually think about this in in framing up our theory of change, right? So as we think about preparing next generation change makers, this is actually drawn from some work I've done with the Center for Creative Leadership and some work I've done at Duke and other places, but really thinking about this X, Y axis for uh, a young person's journey into life, but also really thinking about how we're continuing to le le lead a life of impact that is deeply fulfilling for ourselves. And so as we think about this, the question is, how do we help people get to that upper right corner where they're having meaningful impact in the world and they're leading meaningful, meaningful lives for themselves? Because if you only pay attention to one of those access points, right? So if you're only focused on transformative impact and you're not also thinking about how you can sustain your own sense of fulfillment and joy and happiness uh, and connection to the community and relationships and everything we've just talked about in terms of our own summer plans, then you can quickly lead to burnout, right? Uh, and if you're just focused on personal transformation and all, we're all blissing out on that beach uh, behind Renee, uh, that's great but you may not have very much impact in the world. And so the question is, how do you balance those two things? How do you uh, continue to live a deeply fulfilling life for yourself? And how do you have transformative impact in the world? And we call this the ARC leadership model. So really thinking about this idea of how do you build self agency, leadership agency? Um, and, and we'll be talking about what that looks like, but that's a lot of the work that Jody and I have done in the world of like, personal leadership development and really getting a sense of where where are your strengths where are your values where are your passions what's your sense of purpose like where, who do you see yourself to be uh, yourself as a leader what are the areas of interest that you have that you might be able to express uh, uh, going forward then the question becomes how do you lead with others that's the relationships piece of this so 
you got self agency, but then how do you think about not just leading self, but how do you lead importantly with others? So it's not top down leadership, it's actually interdependent leadership and it's being able to work with others in the context of a community. And so one of the things we pay a lot of attention to when you go into a community is doing it with a lot of humility and that concept of servant leadership. How do you go in as a listener and as a learner and somebody who can really understand what the needs of the community are and the recognize the fact that you are joining a conversation uh, that's been going on often for decades and generations uh, and thinking about ways that you can contribute into that conversation uh, with the right type of approach and a right type of emotional intelligence. And then how do you think about the kind of problem you wanna to try to take on uh, and develop this, the sort of tools to be able to say, hey, I've got an, ish, uh, an interest in like, for example, our daughter's gotten deeply interested in sustainable development, specifically around how do you link sustainable development and affordable housing? So that's pretty cool to see a 19 year old starting to wrap her arms and heads around what that might look like. But the question is like, okay, so that's the target. How do you create more affordable, sustainable housing? For example, what are the strategies to be able to get there? How do you work within a community to make it happen? How do you leverage your own strengths and passions to be able to, to make it work, et cetera? So that's the that's sort of the arc framework that we that we often refer to and think about in the context of our work. And then this is, you know, we're all educators here and thinking about how to be able to really stimulate learning. How do we provide the kind of tools that then students can quickly put into action, give them the chance to then step back and reflect on the kind of impact they're having, uh, and then make the appropriate adaptations and keep it going, right? This is not a linear line. You're not going to, you know, go from the bottom left to the top right, right away. You're going to go through a whole iterative process, and this is a lifelong journey, uh, as we all know. But how do we ex give, give them and exercise the muscles of learning, action, reflection, and adaptation, and keep thinking about ways to be able to, to make that happen. So that's the, that's the framework um, that we uh, are using to help to inform of a lot of our programming, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But is there any, any questions or thoughts about this particular framework that I'm, I'm putting up? Nope, all right, I'm, I'm gonna keep on trucking then. So as we think about that in the context of the Sullivan Foundation now, we think about this in terms of an engagement funnel. So how do we think about ways to be able to really uh, engage students um, through just outreach, through your own relationships, through the connections? This is why you all are so important to this because for a lot of students, they're, they may be sort of tangentially interested in these kinds of concepts, but they have no idea the Sullivan Foundation exists. They have no idea what the available programming is. They have no idea what, even what social innovation and entrepreneurship may look like. They have no idea what change making leadership looks like. But I can tell you, having taught this for a long time, uh, both at the high school and at the collegiate level, uh, what I find is that a lot of young people have an appetite and a hunger for this kind of work. Uh, they they want to go change the world. They want to have a positive impact. They want to lead meaningful lives, but they have no idea how to actually express that. And so. What we try to do is bring them into this community through a set of engagement activities like the website, the newsletter, social media, uh, et cetera, your relationships, your contacts, and give you the tools to be able to do that kind of outreach. And then the very first step that we often see with a lot of students is they come to the Ignite Retreat, which is what we'll talk about next. But if they're interested in this concept, one of the things that Sullivan Foundation is doing in like large scale format is to be able to have these Ignite Retreats. And I think there's a couple of quick things that we will, we will note on that. One, as you guys probably know, we do these Ignite Retreats twice a year uh, in Black Mountain, North Carolina, just outside of Asheville. And uh, it's a great way for these young people to be able to connect. And I'll show a video of it in a minute. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. Um, in addition to that, we're actually starting to, with our, with our team, to be able to go to campuses and offer mini Ignite retreats. And we're gonna do a couple of those next year. But if any of your schools have an interest in hosting a mini Ignite retreat, uh, let us know, because it's one of the things we recognize that not every student can travel to Asheville. Uh, and uh, you may have an interest in trying to put something like that together for your college, but also uh, surrounding colleges. So we're starting to do some interesting things and have some interesting conversations about hosting these 
mini Ignite retreats to be able to get students in. And really this is their first exposure to, to this work. Then if they get excited and interested in what's happening with the Ignite retreats and they say, hey, this is something I'm really excited about. This is something I wanna do more with. Uh, this is an opportunity for them to go farther through the three year fellowship experience. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but this is a way and a number of you have talked about sort of the, participating in the fellows program. And this is, this is a way for us to respond to the fact that we had a lot of students who said, hey, you know, I love this and I wanna do more this is a way for us to be able to provide a, a much deeper relationship um, with uh, with the Sullivan Foundation and with their fellow fellows. And this is uh, something that we're really excited about uh, building on. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then we're uh, about to roll out, and I'll talk about this uh, later, uh, a summer institute program. So next summer, we're looking to run a 12-week uh, long um, internship program that will have credit bearing experiences with it in Asheville. So we're really looking to deepen our relationship with the Asheville community. So super cool about what that's going to look like. And again, we can talk more about that. So that's, that's sort of the work that we're doing in the equip, uh, uh, area. And then, um, for the students that are really demonstrating exceptional impact, we're looking to basically say, Hey, uh, we want to honor that. And uh, we do that through our awards program. And then we also look to do that through our alumni, alumni and community awards. And then uh, we look to be able to, like I said, further support uh, all of these students as they look to graduate from school. Uh, and we're ex really excited, not only what we're doing with the alumni, and we're having a number of alumni gatherings. There was just one in Durham actually uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, but also rolling out this impact prize which is a way for us to be able to have a financial um, prize uh, for students that are working on high impact social enterprises, which we'll talk about. So that's the funnel. And this is sort of helping to guide and frame how we're trying to work on this. So it's all related to this framework of learning, which is connected to this mission statement. So it's the mission statement. Here's what this looks like from an education perspective. And now here's what it looks like from a programmatic perspective. Uh, so this is like, this is the outcome we're trying to achieve, getting students to this upper right corner. And we're trying to do it through a set of strategic programs uh, to drive this work forward and really looking to, uh, again, not just deepen that funnel, but broaden that funnel in partnership with our schools and our universities. So keep that in mind, keep this framework in mind, because now what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to go deeper into each one of these. Uh, but are there any questions about the overall sort of uh, programming design and how we're thinking about it? Nope. All right, cool. All right. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we run these Ignite retreats. Um, we do them twice a year in Black Mountain. That's where that is. It's it's very beautiful for those of you who've been out there. It's uh, in the mountains. It's a really stimulating and inspiring place to be. Uh, and I'm hoping this this is gonna. Can you all hear this? Cool. The Ignite Retreat is just an empowerment camp for people who want to make change in this world. Whether it's a small change or a very large change, this is the community to get into for that. The idea is college students come here and we empower them with the knowledge, the skills, and the tools to be able to take the ideas you have to impact your community and bring it to fruition and actually do it. The Ignite Retreat is broken into three tracks, personal, problem, and project. And I love that no matter where you're at in your change-making journey, the Ignite Retreat can be a home base for you where you come, learn, and grow. The Ignite Retreat is all about igniting that spark, inspiring them to live into that passion, and encouraging them to show up as their whole selves. The collaborators and the facilitators are some of the best that I've ever seen personally. They create a very safe environment for people to like want to express themselves and want to be vulnerable. Whether it's social entrepreneurship or just like creating your own business, finding your own community of people and learning how to create those connections. That's what I think the Ignite Retreat is. Let's be real, there's a lot of problems out on this planet and why not try to fix few if I can? Might as well. I mean, you only live once, so why not make the most of it? The energy that comes from this retreat it's so unique and so unlike any other space that I've been in. So I'm going to come back with 
just like this energy that's here, the stories and perspectives of everyone else. And I really hope I can use that to further enrich my own community. I am from Ukraine. I fled the war in Ukraine. I've never had the experience of being around so many great people that are so passionate about what they do. All of them are from super diverse backgrounds, but yet so similar in a way where everyone wants to change the world for the better and just create a positive impact. And I feel like this entire thing has been the peak of my life even. So I could say that. All right, that's a, uh, it gives you a glimpse of that. It was a uh, very cool, very powerful experience for those of us who were there uh, in uh, Black Mountain this, uh, this most recent, uh, I guess like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, so uh, that gives you a quick sense of it. Uh, you know, here's gives you some of the numbers here. We've got, you know, over 1,800 students that have been able to go to the Ignite Retreat. Uh, and, uh, and really coming out of COVID, we're seeing a lot of, return uh, and and a lot of excitement. In fact, this most recent Ignite Retreat, I think Jody was the largest Ignite Retreat we've had so far. So those numbers are going up. We've got over 100 students that are coming to these retreats now, and the energy is uh, is very palpable. So uh, it's great. You know, it sounds like, you know, more people are uh, getting excited about trying to send more students to it. But uh, the one key thing in this call, I would really say is like, if you can start to really think about students who would benefit and enjoy coming to the retreat, uh, it's, a, it's a very cool thing. Renee, anything you would like to add on that one? You've been to a few of them uh, and bring a lot of energy to it. Uh, Chris, thanks so much for showing the video. And we all saw this in Richmond and it's fabulous. Um, so what I can share is that I bring, um, this spring I brought eight students and in the fall I'll be bringing 12. And when we leave, Black Mountain on Sunday, we go have lunch and we debrief. The students really have gained such introspection about themselves as human being and have kind of put, starting to put pieces of the puzzle together. Um, this is very unique. There's nothing like it out there. And the students will tell you that they thought it was, um, a couple of my students were very honest and said that they thought the whole concept was really hokey at first until they got there and how transformative it was and how deeply it impacted them. So it's a great way for students to um, challenge themselves, go beyond what they thought they could, could do and really come home with some tools to be the change makers of our future. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, has anybody just had a curiosity, anybody else on this call been to an Ignite retreat? Yeah. Kelsey Whitney Whitney shaking her head and by the way I yeah. missed her a while ago Whitney yes introduce yes. yourself I'm sorry hey hey you are my name is Whitney Jackson I'm the academic mentor here at the University of Mississippi with the Center for Community Engagement and I'm also the campus liaison for the Sullivan Fellows here on campus cool and Whitney you've been to an Ignite retreat yes I went to my first one this past fall oh great Awesome. And Kelsey, it looks like you've been as well. Yep. I went to my first one in the spring of this semester. So cool. Any takeaways from that? My students loved it. They had a great time. They couldn't stop talking about it for weeks. I also had a great time, but I just couldn't get over how much they seemed to learn, but also the fact that they just loved the whole experience. That was great. So yeah, that's awesome. Fantastic. Um, all right, so now let's talk about the fellowship. Uh, so as I mentioned before, this is was designed really to, uh, we've got a lot of students who whet their appetite at the Ignite Retreat, come out of it, and it's, you know, Kelsey's mentioned, Renee's mentioned, and Whitney, you experienced in the fall. There's just a lot of energy, and students really want to sort of go farther with this. Uh, and so we designed the, the fellowship to really harness that energy, but also to continue to deepen it and, and figure out ways that we can get more students engaged. So it's a three-year fellowship experience, as I mentioned before. Um, we are striving to get ultimately 12 students in from every participating school. So four students 
per class. So for sophomores, for juniors, for seniors, so that you've got a cohort of 12. Um, we've got, what is it, Jody, 12 schools that are participating this upcoming fall? 12 schools with um, 42 students in the new entering class cohort, yeah. yeah. Which is just awesome. So the, as this builds up, it's going to become that much richer of an experience. Um, and uh, we can circulate this as well in terms of the overall fellowship design, but it's a three year program and there's it's anchored on three different years of experience. Uh, so it's and it's not surprisingly for like strength uh, structured around this arc leadership model that we were talking about before. So the sophomore experience uh, is led by Jody as the faculty director. Uh, we will have a faculty director and we'll have a program director for every every one of the years. And so, Jody, you want to, anything you want to talk about in terms of the sophomore leadership year? Yeah, so what we're really trying to do is get them immersed in the community and, and introduced to a lot of leaders, especially in the fall retreat. Um, we'll do a lot of team building and some rope course stuff. But the idea is let's not make this another class. Let's get them into front of, in, in front of people or beside people who have walked a journey of leadership development in their community and how that really how those individuals can can tell their story and talk about their journey and and utilize their life experiences that that really propel them to where they are today. And that's that's the main emphasis that I want to focus in on during the during the fall retreat now the spring retreat well between the spring and fall retreat we'll have connection at, uh, uh, meetups and we're going to uh, go through different um, themes for, for each one of those classes we're going to mix these group up and put them in cohorts but um, we, we're also mindful they're in college they're doing their work but we want to have them uh, connecting with each other throughout the year and 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 having uh, some type of uh, activities that that Build, builds a deeper bond among this cohort as they go through a three-year process. So we'll have monthly meetups with them. And then the spring year, uh, excuse me, the spring uh, fellows retreat will come in and we'll focus in on a temperament test. Um, we're looking at real colors to look at some of their stuff, to look at personality-based um, assessments. And uh, then we'll also focus on uh, the leadership literacy framework, which I developed and put together um, in a book. And, and and we'll go through that whole framework. It's the inspired leadership framework. And we'll step through that 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 spring weekend with them. And and once that uh, process is done, that's when they'll uh, move on to their to their junior year, which is community engagement. Cool. Awesome. All right. So that's the that's a sophomore year. Uh, the junior year is really focused on this idea of deeply engaging with community. Uh, and so they are going to be, again, grounded in the Asheville region. We are hiring actually a community faculty director uh, for this track in Asheville who will be grounded there. Uh, as well as a program manager, because we're looking for people who have deep relationships within the Asheville region. We have a number of relationships there already, uh, but this is designed to give them an immersive experience within community to learn about uh, community asset mapping, for example, uh, asset-based community development, really understanding how organizations operate and how you work within the context of organizations. Uh, and then we're asking the students to actually start to think about ways that they can put together a local impact project, either within the Asheville region or probably more likely uh, in the community that is surrounding your university or college. Uh, so uh, we're really excited about what that that track looks like. We also have a number of people who say, well, what happens if a student is studying abroad for one of those semesters and it's been designed so a student could do it through the fall and then go study abroad in the spring um, or be part of the whole year experience or study abroad in the fall and come back uh, in the spring. So uh, we're really taking that into consideration. And then finally, senior year, um, we're really help, looking to help them launch. Uh, obviously, they're seniors, they're thinking about what's next. Uh, and so I co-authored a book called Life Entrepreneurs uh, that looks at how you know, we interviewed 55 people for the book that had created extraordinary lives for themselves and extraordinary impact in the world. Uh, and this is an opportunity for them to really be thinking about their entrepreneurial life journey and give them some of those tools, give them some of those skills. They'll develop something, and I'll, I'll call it an entrepreneurial life plan. 
Uh, and then we are also this year going to be connecting them, the senior year going to be connecting them with mentors. So we have a number of uh, obviously folks in our Sullivan network and based upon where that student is coming from, we'll connect him or her or them to a uh, to a mentor uh, to give them again uh, opportunities to be able to test out a set of ideas and think about what's next and be able, really be able to help uh, get ready to launch and then we'll be celebrating them in the spring so a big retreat in the fall and a big celebration in the spring uh, helping them uh, in their launch plan so that's the overall design again we can as a follow-up to this uh, send you guys a, a, a deeper overview of the fellowship experience if you'd like it uh, and including roles and responsibilities and everything else like that. But uh, but any questions that you all have about that structure of the fellowship program? Nope. Okay, cool. Jody, anything else you'd like to add before we go on? No, I mean, it's just, this is great. Great that we're covering this. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay. So then, uh, and then this, these are the schools that are participating. One quick thing I will mention that we're really excited about. We got a number of new schools coming on board, uh, including uh, Belmont and Fisk that are both in Nashville, Tennessee. And what we are excited about in terms of this partnership is because Fisk has not been a Sullivan school. Through the fellowship, they're becoming a Sullivan school. They're gonna have the Sullivan Award and they're an HBCU that's got a strong relationship with Belmont. And so you're gonna have these two universities approximate to one another that are really thinking about ways that they can work closely with one another and have a, a cross fellowship experience. Uh, and so uh, through the fellowship program and experience, we're looking to really foster those kinds of relationships uh, between a participating school and maybe a school that's interested in coming into the Sullivan network that might be an HBCU. So keep that in mind. Uh, but it's something that we're excited about as we continue to add schools. And as we talked about earlier, we'll have 12 schools participating uh, in uh, this upcoming fellowship year with 42 fellows. So it's really becoming a pretty robust and exciting program. And so our hope is that we'll have, you know, when this whole thing is built out, probably, you know, maybe a couple hundred fellows that are now going through the whole experience. So it's a, it's a robust and exciting uh, program. Um, as I mentioned, also, we're going to be having rolling out this uh, summer institute, this summer experience um, in Asheville that will be next summer, not so not summer 24, but summer 2025. It's a 12 week experience. We're still putting the pieces together on it, but it will be a really, really cool uh, opportunity for the students ideally to be able to get uh, three credit hours for a course that they will take on change making leadership, but also three credit hours they'll get through an internship experience with local social enterprises uh, in the community and they'll be paired up and then placed into these uh, internship experiences it's modeled off some other things uh, that i've done uh, along these lines uh, which I, you know hopefully will be will be helpful uh, and I, I think have offer a lot of possibilities and then the impact prize uh, is something we're also rolling out in spring of 2025 to, but just to foreshadow it We've set aside $25,000 uh, in, the, in the budget for, for, for this uh, to start with. Uh, and it's broken into two prizes. One prize, which will be for uh, a, a and so the eligibility for this is anybody within the Sullivan network. So an award winner, somebody who's been gone through the Ignite retreat, somebody who's been a fellow, um, but under the age of 35, and we got two prize categories. One prize category is for promising ideas. So it's for somebody who's working on an idea, uh, but has not yet launched it, uh, but has demonstrated a lot of like, they've done a lot of the work and they've done the market research and they've been able to test whether or not this idea has got some real possibilities to it. Uh, and, and that's one prize category. And then we've got another prize category on scaling uh a impactful venture so the way that we're uh, looking at this is somebody who's launched uh an idea uh it's got uh some market uh adoption uh it's maybe working in one community and that social entrepreneur is looking to scale his or her or their venture uh to either other communities or to be able to scale it within a community so uh that's sort of an area that we're really uh, excited about expanding into as well. So that impact prize, 
we are going to start to spread the word on it this fall. This spring is when we will actually open up the window and then we will award the prize in spring of 2026 so announce 2025 and then award 2026 and that will be an annual thing that will that will have an impact prize uh, that will be and the winner will the winners will be featured at the annual showcase uh, so we're, we're super excited about uh, what that can look like too. any uh, any questions about those two ideas. All right. And then, uh, Jody, I'll kick it back over to you for the faculty programs. Obviously, we're participating in, you know, a faculty program right now, but, uh, but this is a way for us to continue to deepen our relationship with faculty and staff. Yeah, so a lot of you guys are new here that we want to talk about the faculty and staff programming. Um, at the Ignite Retreat, if you come and participate, you, uh, we have a faculty uh, and staff track. Last, uh, in the spring, Renee ran that track and did a fantastic job. We had a lot of beautiful feedback and I appreciate her and her uh, uh, participation and in, in coordinating and implementing that. And she and I are going to come, we're meeting uh, July, August? Yeah, to really plan out for next semester how we're going to redesign uh, the, the faculty and staff uh, programming going forward. Uh, we Coming out of COVID, we had a vision for it, and we think that we got the, we, we, we had uh, the information from the faculty and staff of what they needed, and now we've gotten kind of new information, and we're out of COVID, and, and we want to do a little bit more uh, programming. We're hearing uh, to, to, to have that uh, built into some afternoon programming. But if you haven't been, it is, it, we try to make this a retreat. It is not a conference. Um, we, we do some professional development. We have some connection uh, activities. Uh, we, we, we look at the framework of, of, of connection, content, and care. So we have some socials and, um, and we get together and learn more about each other. And then we have content where we have professional development. And then in the afternoon, we set it up where we have some massage therapists come and, and give the faculty and staff some massages. You can have, we're in a beautiful mountain. So we have the opportunity to have the retreat out there and really try to re-energize and recharge yourself because it's the middle of the semester and we know most faculty and staff are, um, they're tired. And especially right now, we're in week 14. I don't know where you guys are. We start exams next week. Some people are just, I think, finishing exams, but we get tired. So, uh, but it's a place where we can learn and develop and grow. Um, you know, and, and of course, this this uh, program right here with the, the monthly calls, we're, we continue to see this, this call grow and we're going to continue to put energy behind it and get great speakers next year and have that planned out. So if you if you can join these calls and continue to stay connected with us and learn more about the, the Falcon and staff programming. And if there's anything that you guys are, are doing, developing classes, you know, we have a seed research and, and, and development grant. So if any of you are looking for some seed money, we can we can put that in our budget. So for, for course development, um, for research projects, uh, it's important. We know that for faculty and staff to have resources, not just as connections. So that's a mechanism, too, of the faculty and staff uh, um, um, programming. So we're, we're going to keep building this and keep moving forward with that. And um, and, and just so glad that our community is developing and, and growing. And we really have a lot of momentum. And it's pretty awesome to see. Okay, have your hand yeah, up. I do. Um, yeah, so I did, did, didn't ask earlier, but uh, I think great information. Really excited about plugging our students into the opportunities. I'm interested just in some of the, some of the merging uh, information about the Summer Institute. You said 12 weeks. Uh, can you share kind of anticipated cost range for students, um, the mechanics of how credit's granted, you know, uh, just how students can capture value from that credit, just anything, any emerging ideas. I'm not looking to pin y'all down. I'm just kind of kind of wondering the, the mechanics of that because um, it sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah, so I appreciate you not wanting to pin us down. So I'm going to I'm going to put all this with the appropriate caveats, which is this is still uh, in formation and we're actually going back to Asheville in June to start nailing down some of the more deep some more of the details. We're looking for a, an anchor education partner between Warren Wilson likely or possibly UNC Asheville uh, where that will be working closely with the school to be able to uh, get the course going and to be able to get the credit going and so the, the ideal scenario is essentially that there's opportunities then to be able to get 
a course certified by the education partner and then for that to be able to transfer to the respective schools where the students are coming from. And we've done this in the past with um, our study abroad programs. Uh, so there's, there are, there's a mechanism for, for putting that together. The focus, like I mentioned, will likely be on, um, on really uh, change making leadership with a strong focus on community uh, based learning and really thinking about how to engage a community in asset mapping and asset based community development um, and uh, and thinking about that in the context of social change and social impact. Um, and ideally, like I said, we're going to try to do it as six credit hours. So you get three credit hours for doing a course and then three credit hours for for basically a, a work work uh, engagement. Um, and uh, that would be with a local social enterprise. And we ideally work with six local nonprofit slash social enterprises that are interested in participating. And it would be, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week where the students would be expected to go and be on site, work closely with those social enterprises on a particular project that we would co-create with that, with those social enterprises. And then every weekend we would have over the course of uh, that time, uh, nice opportunities for them to get in the mountains, be able to do some team building, leadership development, explore the region, uh, all those good things. So, do you envision um, using the residential facilities at one of the anchor institutions, or maybe even some other? I mean, you're exploring other options, and just curious about that. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of the things we need to figure out. But yes, okay. uh, maybe it, it may be at the Y. Got it. Okay. It may be where the treat is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Nate. Thank you. We just have to, like, as you can imagine, it's like you know, there's a lot of logistics uh, that need to be worked out. Like, where are they going to stay? How do they get around? You know, the transportation, all that good stuff. So uh, we're still working. That's one of the reasons why it's thank God not this summer, uh, right. but it's next summer. So right. we got a, we got a little lead time, but cool. we're, we're hoping to start to have it. And we have we have an overview, uh, at least a high level outline of what that's going to entail. Um, and um, we can circulate that now. Uh, so Jody, I think you've got access to that and you can circulate it to this group. But, uh, but um, uh, we'll try to get more details and our hope is to get a lot of this nailed down um, by the fall so that we can start to do active recruitment. And it may be just a small pilot to start with and see how it grows, but we wanna sort of assess demand um, and, uh, and see how many students are interested in actually doing it. Before I know we're, we're a little over time, which is great because this is very informative and a lot of good questions. But I also want everybody to put on their calendar about the. I mean, it, uh, next year is our hundredth uh, year anniversary of celebrating the award, and we're going to have a big um, c celebration in Nashville, which will be next spring. But I just want to make sure you 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 guys are aware of that's coming up, and 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 this is going to be a big big year for Sullivan. I'm very uh, proud to be a part of this organization as we move forward with this continued organization of service. Anything else? Christopher, thank you very much for your time. And that's in, that informative information as we continue to develop and grow programming. You got it. So I for everyone uh, will I'm sorry, go yeah. ahead, Christopher. What? I was going to say, just good luck with the wrapping up the semester and uh, school year and enjoy your summers. Yeah. Enjoy. Thanks, Christopher. Very you good. Got it. Take care, guys. See you. Thank you. Bye.